My name is uh, Michael Pittman. I'm a PhD student in UCL Earth Sciences. Uh, I study the evolution of the tail and how it works, its biomechanics, in dinosaurs. Um, in 2008, uh, me and a team of uh, researchers went to the Gobi Desert to look for to new dinosaurs there to try and understand um, the Inner Mongolian Late Cretaceous fauna, this last period of the dinosaurs. Very uh, poorly known in, in China, but well known in Mongolia. Now, we went to um, an area that looked like this, very hummocky ground in the southern margin of the desert, uh, very hot, f about 40, 50 degrees. Um, and we were walking around, we spend most of the days walking, and um, we eventually found uh, a new taxa. Um, so this is how the desert um, gives way to a flat um, plain. We didn't find the dinosaur there, we found it in this hummocky area where my friend Jonah from George Washington University uh, saw a claw um, sticking out the cliff. And um, he showed me this, and uh, I was thinking, he said, what, what do you think it is? And I was like, well, I know what it is, but do you? And he's, he said, I do. And so eventually I told him what it was. It was a carnivorous dinosaur, and we were both ecstatic. Like everyone in the area could hear us because they came rushing over like thinking something was wrong. It was a, it was a, a claw of a carnivorous dinosaur. But um, we didn't know what it was. It's very difficult to tell from just a claw. So our friend Xu, the professor um, that organized it in China, he eventually sent us some photos and, and here's what he sent us. It's a, a fully articulated, complete dromaeosaur, a type of carnivorous dinosaur. Its tail is, is not in this photo, but um, it's in a separate uh, jacket but um, a, complete, a complete dromaeosaur. Now, dromaeosaurs are carnivorous dinosaurs that have three bones in the skull that are completely absent in other carnivorous dinosaurs, like T-Rex. Um, now, dromaeosaurs are w very well known from skulls and from all over the, the world, but our best specimen is actually one from Mongolia, and it's a Velociraptor, that well-known dinosaur. And this is a picture of it fighting with the Protoceratops. They were actually buried, locked in combat. So this is basically our main idea of what the Dromaeosaur skeleton is like, just from this, this one perfectly preserved animal. Now, um, Lingha Raptor is different from um, Velociraptor. This is an, an original uh, monograph picture. And um, because if you look at the skull here, this is the orbit, the eye. In front of it, there's this antorbital fenestra, which um, houses a sinus, and this sinus helps heat up, heat up air, very much like in our own faces. Um, in Lingha Raptor, the anterior portion, called the maxillary fenestra, is particularly anteriorly placed. It's forward in the skull, and it's also about the same size as this hole here, the nasal opening, associated with the, the nasal cavity. So that's what makes it different. But what makes a Lingha Raptor important is its preservation. So the actual name of Lingha Raptor is Lingha Raptor Exquisitus. Exquisitus because it's a complete uh, individual. This is actually not fully prepared yet. It's, this has maybe still got um, months and months of work to, to be done. But it's important because it now, now we have this vast database, this vast um, source of information from which we can actually understand what other dromaeosaurs look like. For example, Sangang Mangus, which means a white monster in Mongolian, it actually is only known from the skull. It's very s closely related to Lingha Raptor because they both share this anterior placement of the maxillary fenestra, but Lingha Raptor is only known from this, um, the, the, this is known from the skeleton and this, Sangang Mangus, is known from only a skull. So immediately, it's very important because we can fill in all this gap and understand what these other dromaeosaurs look like. And so that's very important because it can show us what the actual relationships were between these animals in much more detail and, and how they evolved and diversified like they did. Uh, and finally, I'd like to show you uh, an artist's reconstruction. This was done by a colleague, uh, Nicholas Frankfurt. Um, it's a black and white drawing but it, and showing the feathers on these dromaeosaurs. And this is probably what these guys look like. Um, many dinosaurs from China uh, have sh shown feathers on, on various types of carnivorous dinosaur, and including T-Rex ancestor. Um, so this guy here has you know, this coating of very primitive feathers, uh, which is what we th thought these guys looked like. And what were, what were they eating? Well, 
they were eating protoceratops. These are um, ancestors of the horn dinosaurs, like triceratops. They're very kind of ancestral forms. So they're probably eating these guys, and they were kind of small, the size of a big dog. And uh, what, they were fast and agile, these dromaeosaurs, and they were living in a, an environment unlike um, the Kalahari Desert today. So it was, it's kind of characterized by um, alluvial fans, like kind of rock falls, and it's, there's lots of rocks every, um, spread out across the ground and very low vegetation.